Hello YouTube, it's Ben here with the uh, 60 gallon African cichlid tank and today's topic are key points to um, cichlid health and actually key points that really apply to any any tropical fish I think, not just cichlids but certainly have been uh, an issue for me and something I've become uh, more aware of, more educated on recently the, um, as you know, those of you who watch my videos, I just recently uh, conquered a bout with uh, some ick and uh, was able to really eradicate it, get it completely out of the tank. And my fish are now, I am happy to uh, say, completely ick free. And, um, and then I, uh, uh, I noticed a little bit of a sunken belly on, uh, on a couple fish and, and, uh, and I figured it wouldn't hurt to do a parasite treatment and so I went ahead and, and uh, treated the tank for parasites and uh, I ended up treating the tank with the uh, for the ick I used the ick attack you can see here cordon ick attack very gentle and uh, for the parasites I used general cure the general cure product uh, both of them did what they're supposed to do and the one fish that I was uh, the most concerned with, the Ethelnane H. Attende, this little, little character right there being harassed by the Luanda, uh, that one, it, its sunken belly has gotten better and its general overall demeanor has gotten better. It's gotten a little thicker. It's displaying its fins a little better. And, uh, and so uh, that's, I think I've turned the corner, turned the corner on the parasites. So I started thinking, like, what is it that um, that predisposes these fish? What is it that predisposes it, these fish to these kinds of diseases? I mean, certainly anyone who's had fish long enough is going to have to deal with these things. And I started looking at what some of the key factors are, and um, and I think what um, um, I've come up with a couple that maybe you can you can use and uh, you might you might find interesting. And I certainly would like to get your opinion on them. Uh, one thing I think that predisposes these fish to uh, to illness is uh, stress, and stress can, can come from many different uh, factors. It can come from uh, harassment, which of course in the in the cichlid world we're, we're all familiar with, and uh, fish being harassed uh, will increase the stress level. And uh, in my tank, I guess if the the culprit is this Lawanda here, if uh, he tends to get uh, get into a mood and chase people around a lot. If he doesn't change, I'm going to be uh, rehoming him pretty soon. And um, this yellow lab here can get uh, a little bit uh, territorial sometimes. And uh, but um, stress and and uh, can certainly predispose the fish to uh, becoming ill. And by the way, all the things you see floating around the tank are not particulates or uh, uh, you know debris or something. What you see are a lot of air bubbles. I noticed a couple days ago that the fish were really working their mouths very heavily. It looked like uh, the way you would expect a, a person to look after walking uh, quickly up a steep flight of stairs, uh, of stairs after you know not being in good shape. And so um, I decided to up the O2 in the tank, the oxygen, and I did that by uh, having a slightly lowered water level and, uh, and the outputs of my um, Sun Sun, my two Sun Sun 302 uh, canister filters are, uh, the outputs are very high, so they're breaking up the water and creating a more O2 in the water. I did it overnight and the next morning I noticed the fish had stopped their gasping, so they're no longer um, breathing in a way that uh, that seems like they're stressed or under some kind of pressure. So what kind of factors can create stress? Okay, again, harassment and also a rapid change in, in uh, water, water measurement, water parameters. You know, a sudden change in temperature, uh, a change in hardness or pH. pH in particular can be real dangerous for your fish. Um, those kind of things can cause stress and that stress can then uh, weaken the fish and anything that's going on in the tank, whether you have parasites around or perhaps some ick floating around, is gonna is gonna take hold on a weakened fish. 
And so, <clears throat> so it's very important to control stress. And one of the ways to do that, of course, is by maintaining stable, stable tank conditions that are testing out well. And by that we mean hardness, of course, nitrates, pH, ammonia levels, chlorine, that kind of thing. These things have to be testing out well and uh, consistently. It's that consistency. And I imagine not enough oxygen would also be producing stress. A fish that's straining to breathe uh, is going to be under a certain amount of stress. And uh, the correction I made to the, uh, to the O2 level of the tank was very noticeable almost immediately. And I'm getting a, a lot less gasping on the part of these fish. They don't look like they're under so much stress. Another factor is quality food. And um, I'm not saying this to pick on anyone who's using um, uh, NLS, you know, New Life Spectrum, but I had some old uh, New Life Spectrum sitting here and uh, I had it mixed in with uh, some of the, uh, just to get, just to use it up, not to waste it, you know. Had it mixed in with some of my North Fin. And, uh, and you know what? I just decided I'm just going to go with straight North Fin. And I noticed a change almost immediately. And by that, what I mean is uh, better, uh, better colors, better activity, better uh, display of fins, um, a little drop in aggression. I mean, a well-fed fish, I think, is going to be a, uh, is going to be a uh, less aggressive fish. I think that's, uh, you can tell me if you think that's true. But um, certainly the uh, uh, going with the straight north fin is, uh, I think, giving me a better outcome. And uh, so certainly quality food is going to be an important factor here. So to sum up like the three key factors, uh, if I had to just sum them up, I would say uh, certainly water quality. And that doesn't mean just clarity. You can have perfectly clear water and, uh, you know, I could empty half the water in this tank or two thirds of it and just fill it up with tap water. I'd have perfect water clarity and I'd have uh, dead fish in about uh, 24 hours. So it's not just water clarity, but also that um, does the water have what it needs to sustain life? And by that, of course, we're talking about beneficial bacteria, right? and the right amounts of uh, hardness, the correct uh, pH level, and, um, and also the temperature of that water. So water quality is point number one in the three key factors, I think, and the different uh, things that make up water quality. Uh, beneficial bacteria, of course. Uh, do you have a, uh, the way, a way of producing beneficial bacteria that is appropriate for the bio load you know, for the bio load of your tank. Uh, of course, us cichlid keepers, we like to overstock to spread out aggression so that no one fish gets uh, completely destroyed. Um, and uh, so because of that, we have to over filter. In my case, I have three, I mean, I have two um, 302 Sun Suns running and those things are, uh, they have sponges, uh, you know, fine, uh, a coarse, medium and fine sponge, then some polyfill, uh, as a water polisher working from the bottom up, right? And uh, and then there's a um, some Biohome Ultimate and then some uh, some Marine Pure and then at the very top on the way back to the tank the last thing the water hits it hits a um, a pouch of Pyrogen and just to help uh, the water quality I've noticed immediate changes after adding Pyrogen to the filter water quality improves dramatically. So water quality and the bio, the beneficial bacteria or producing water that is, uh, you know, able to sustain life and provide the correct parameters for these fish. And finally, a low stress environment. A low stress environment is also crucial for the health of your fish. And that low stress environment, um, all these things kind of fit into each other. A low stress environment is one that where you have good water quality, good nutrition, 
you know, the right parameters, right temperature, you know, a low stress environment, correct diet, quality food being fed to the fish. And um, that would be a low, uh, a low stress environment. Also one where you've controlled aggression by taking rapid action, isolating a fish that's overly aggressive and making sure you have the right mix of fish. Don't have fish that uh, are gonna look at other fish as, uh, as food and are gonna be predators to those fish or fish that are so territorial that they see the entire tank as their territory and uh, wanna destroy everybody else in it. So creating a low stress environment so that your fish are not predisposed to illness and uh, that's gonna be very, very crucial. So stable, uh, healthy water parameters, right? Healthy, healthy water uh, with uh, you know stable parameters, beneficial bacteria, and a low stress, that means well fed, well oxygenated water, and correct tank mates. And last, quality nutrition. Don't cut corners on your nutrition. Be sure you're feeding your fish the right kind of food. Certainly if you have mabunas, right, you're gonna need some veggies in there. And uh, so quality nutrition is crucial. And uh, in my case, I've had really good luck with Northfin and the kind of results I see with Northfin on both color and the fish filling out is um, almost immediate when I went to 100% Northfin and I cut out the um, New Life Spectrum. So those are, the, those are the key factors that I feel if maintained and controlled, you're gonna minimize the chances of predisposing your fish to, uh, to illness or ending up having to treat your fish, uh, you know, with with uh, medicine and other factors to uh, to keep them healthy. Just don't predispose them by uh, violating some of these points. Uh, I hope that helps. Uh, let's end off by taking a look at some of the fish here and how they're doing. The redfin borley eye is looking a lot better. He. Um, Tends to bang up against rocks a bit, and uh, but his uh, color and uh, his uh, scales look a lot better. I think it may have something to do with adding some of these uh, some of these lake salts. I started adding some of these uh, cichlid lake salts, and um, I think they can they contain uh, certain uh, minerals that are that are lacking when you use tap water. And so as a result, the redfin borlea is looking a little better. You can see him, good sized fish. He could be the tank boss, but he's a little bit, uh, a little bit timid. This uh, Fusco is, nobody messes with him. He doesn't really chase anybody around, but he could be the boss if he wanted to. He's still a baby. The Lawanda tries to be the boss. Uh, nobody messes with my OB. One of my first cichlids. And uh, nobody messes with the German Red either. So if I had to pick one that's that's the most assertive, it's got to be the Lawanda, who tries to assert. But even he gets over uh, overruled and overrun by the Yellow Lab. When the Yellow Lab gets in a mood, uh, nobody messes with him. Uh, some other fish uh, we can take a closer look at. This tangerine tiger is starting to show some nice markings. Really anxious to watch him color up. Also, this Z Rock is looking very nice. A little Z Rock. Love the uh, yellow on the forehead of the Z Rock. Zimbabwe Rock. I've noticed some nice uh, colors starting to come in. Come in on him. And of course, the uh, electric blue has always been kind of a rock star here in the tank. Notice the blue on the anal fin. It's starting to creep down the anal fin. It's actually very pretty. And uh, that's pretty much it for today. I hope those key points help. And uh, here's my yellow. Yellowtail looks like he scraped up against something.
I've said it before and at some point I'm going to swap out this lava rock pick up some smoother rock because these fish do dart around quite quickly sometimes I think they bang into things um, one of the things that was contributing by the way this is a little bit funny uh, but one of the things that was contributing to the sunken belly on that uh, Ethel Nene Chitende back there is uh, I think I think he's got a vision a vision problem because I've seen him go after food and he misses over and over again and he'll try and get a piece of food on the surface and he'll just miss and miss and miss so obviously he's got a uh, he's not quite 2020 and uh, if I could get him a pair of contacts or something maybe he'd uh, put on some more weight but anyway he is eating well and he loves the North Fin uh, the North Fin food here's the little flame tail flame tail is doing great and uh, little wand is a beautiful fish, but you know, sometimes beautiful fish you got to uh, unload them if they're too aggressive. Doesn't matter how pretty they are if they're disrupting the tank. And uh, so that's all for now. I hope those tips help. Uh, they're just some observations I've made. Always remember. Uh, Anything I say in my videos is one man's opinion. And uh, uh, so treat it as such. Definitely watch a lot of videos and uh, always be gathering information. I think that really helps, it certainly helps me. I'm always watching what people are posting and commenting on their videos. There's a lot of good information out there and a lot of experience that other people uh, are going through that uh, might save uh, might save us some money, some time, some aggravation, and uh, that was certainly my case recently, having uh, going through some uh, uh, situations with ick, and then of course with some parasites. So, all right, so that's all for now. Thank you so much to everybody who uh, watches the videos, who comments. I do, as you know, read the comments and uh, and like to uh, respond when I can, and. Uh, the Bucanono. Bucanono never stops. The Bucanono is constantly moving around and uh, sometimes chases other fish, but not always. Um, he'll end up being pretty big, I think. And uh, he'll be another reason, like the Fusco and the Frontosa, another reason for me to uh, move into that 120 gallon or larger, depending on what my, uh, my plans are here. Okay, so that's it for now. And by the way, I get a lot of questions about my clowns. Uh, people ask me um, if the uh, hardness, I mean, my, my or the pH, my pH runs about maybe 7.9. I'm not in the 8s necessarily, uh, about 7, 9 or so, um, maybe flirting with 8. But, uh, and people ask me if that pH is harming the, the clowns. All I can say is just look at them. I mean, uh, do they look under stress to you? Do they look like they're not thriving? Um, they're doing great. The cichlids do not mess with them at all. They have some little barbs around their mouth that I think that the cichlids find very uncomfortable to tangle with so they stay away from them. I would never put less than three in a tank at one time and I would never uh, put them in there unless they're about two inches uh, in size. If they're too small they will become uh, a snack for your cichlids especially uh, your haps, your predator uh, cichlids. They'll uh, see them as a snack. I made a mistake and put a small uh, Pleco, an albino Pleco in here. Everybody converged on him. He was the uh, he was the uh, hors d'oeuvre of the day, and I was able to save him and uh, and move him to a back tank where uh, he's growing out. So, anyway, hopefully you'll get uh, you'll get a point or two from this video that you'll uh, be able to apply. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you.